Good guys. So, you know, on the opening matches, the first map is always set as Sunburn. And Sunburn is the lovely map you can see here right now. We have... <laughs> It is a crazy map, right? When I saw it and I showed it to the viewers when I was streaming and asking for feedback, people absolutely loved Sunburn just because the way it is shaped out. So, literally you have a line of tree going from the left corner to the right-hand side corner and it's a big chunk of wood or a, for a forest and in between there are two players. First, we have Dark. Spawning here in the blue trunks as Slavs. And on the right hand side of the map we have Dugao playing in red trunks as Bohemians. And this map is also very specific in a way. Because usually you start with two elephants and eight sheep. In this map you start instead of two elephants, you start with three elephants. And you also have three bushes of forage bushes. Dark, he is going to go for the lame here. He wants to lame Dugao. That would be an ideal scenario for him because that would lead or follow up him having four elephants and Dugao only two. So let's see if Dark is going to be successful in doing so. Ali, thanks for the raid, by the way. And yeah, I think by the looks of it, Dark is definitely doing a good job in uh, being successful in his raid, uh, in his lane. I'm not sure if he's going to take one more hit. We will quickly check there. Ideally, you will... Try to lane the elephant and only get one hit on the scout. This time he did two. It's not the worst thing, right? It just takes off 10 more HP. So that's something you want to avoid. So let me quickly check if Dugao is aware of the elephants being lamed here. He's not aware because he has not scouted the north hand side, right? That's something he's not really sure about. He has the confirmation that Dark indeed has an elephant here. Now let's see. Dugao, he wants to go for lame as well. And this time he also took the two hoods, right? Let's see if Dark is paying attention here. He's laming the two sheep. That's good. And he sees the elephant being lamed as well. So is he going to be paying attention? It looks like that. He is very active and he is going to intercept the elephant. And let's see if he is going to be successful in doing so. So Dugao, he is taking some hits from, the, from Dark's scout. And, you know, uh, like Dugao is not that kind of person who is really known for laming. So let's see how well he's going to be able to pull that one off. But it feels like to me that, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he feels like he's been doing this for quite some time already in his life. He is doing a marvelous job here. And Dark, he is really trying everything he can to stop that. But, you know, that's exactly what you have to do if your opponent tries to block the elephant from chasing you. You just stand there with your scout that's what you have to do <clears throat> okay but i think dark still came ahead of the early beginning or the beginning because he has not lost as much hp as dugao has and in addition to that there are two sheep he was able to steal dark here going for the berry bushes here on the left hand side so, by the looks of it, he'd rather focus his attention here on the north side. However, his main goal is on the south side, right? So, he will have to think about how he wants to approach this one. And this game or this map is very new for everyone, right? This is not something uh, we professional players have played so often yet in our life that we know exactly... Um, that we know exactly what uh, what kind of meta is there. These are his own sheeps, really? Okay. Well, then... Then I was wrong with that one. Both are almost equal, then, in terms of the food they have accessible to them. Dugao, he is fully focusing on the south side. He's taking that gold. I like that choice. Because most people would go for that gold, because that is the main gold. It has seven gold piles versus the four. But the great thing here about this... Or Dark is taking a lot of damage on his scout. So yeah, his scout should be a bit less than, than uh, Dugao's now. And this one is just completely safe. It has a... Uh, it's safe in the back. And therefore, Dugao should not be worried too much. Dugao, he's going for a barrack opening. While Dark, he's going for an archer opening. 
So what we will see from the Gao most likely is going to be a third militia and two men at arms. That's what I'm assuming. He doesn't have to go to add the third militia yet. Yeah. And now Dark, he has full knowledge about what the militia are up to. He has the scouting information and he's also going to be up to fuel age a bit faster. Just one villager faster than, than Dugao. <coughs> Dugao is going just for a straight man at arm into archer build. And that's also not a, a nice thing for Bohemians in general. Because it's really easy to get in the gold income. Because Bohemians, they get the gold mining upgrade for free. And that helps a lot. So we will see a fight now. And Dugao, he has lost his scout there. Even though he had more HP, but I think he engaged a bit too soon there, Dugao did. Archer coming in there and yeah, Dark is completely safe. He will not be taking any damage from those militia. Yeah, Dugao is just trying to be a bit annoying, but it's not going to be too successful here, I, I suppose. Also, question is, okay, that's the question which I was about to ask. Who is going to add the blacksmith first? And who's going to be able to get to Fletching sooner? It looks like Dark definitely is going to have the advantage in terms of timing attack. Because he will have more archers on the field as his archer range was a bit faster. And he will also have Fletching much earlier than Dugao here. If you look at Dugao, he is going for skirms now. He also went for the uh, second berry bush. And he's not going for blacksmith yet. Okay, now he's adding that. He doesn't see the sheep here. Okay. I'm not sure if the uh, if the Gao will or has played that map too often because obviously there is a likelihood that the sheep are there. But again, his his scout was busy with something else, right? So Skirm's going forward. He doesn't have fletching yet, and if you don't have fletching. You don't really are in the you are not really in the position where you can put too much aggression, I think. Dugao must be very happy with the fact that he was able to force a tower from Dark. And that's the thing. Like Dugao, if Dugao was in this position, he would have uh, put the gold mining camp there, right? So that's a little different here already. And forcing your opponent to build a tower is a nice thing because that means that there are 200 stone. From the beginning, 125 of those are going to be invested into the tower. That means he's not going to be able to add TCs in Castle Age without either mining stone or using the market to buy himself the stone. And Dugao, he's walling the map very heavily here. Yeah, the map is called Sunburn. I would still say the build so far seems to be a bit cleaner for dark. That's how I feel about it. We see the scout getting full information here that the guy is walled. But yeah, now it's now it's dead. And I think what the uh, dark should be doing right now is just ignore this here and try to deal some damage here on the north hand side. Let's see how well his scouting was previously. Yeah, he is not he is not aware of the berries here. I mean, in theory, you should know because berries are always spawning two to one, right? So you never have the the scenario where three berry bushes are on one side. That's just not a thing. And Dugao, he has fully walled there before the archers are coming in. Yeah, Dark is not going to be able to do anything there. Why is this called Sunburn? I have no idea. Good. Market has been added by Dark. And it looks like... Like, for example, if he had the 200 stone, let's say. He would be able to sell the stone. And he would get himself up to uh, Castle Age much earlier. But that's not something he can do right now. The guy turning this into an arena. Well, you have to, right? Well, not, not necessarily have to, but... It's just a very comfy way to do it. And Dark, he indeed, he is going up to Castle Age now. So he's going to be faster. He's housed now. So he has to build a house right away. But uh, like raiding here is just so hard to pull off. Because the wood lines are so close to the TC. Bohemian, with Bohemians you want to go for arena style. Yeah. 
No way. Is he really trying to get the, the Rhino in with the Archer? No way. I've never seen this uh, being done on this map. 0 0.96, 0 0.96. This is hilarious. This is really hilarious. Ah, uh, I've seen this been done on a different map. It was uh, an Empire Wars map. I don't know how it is called anymore. I think Winked. Yeah, it should be Winked if I'm not mistaken. And that is a lovely, uh, lovely idea, really. Very nice play by, by Dark here. And he didn't even lose the Archer. Didn't even lose the Archer. And Dugao, he's going up now. He's going to be trailing behind two minutes. Dark going for the stable now. While Dugao, he's adding the second Archer range. I also did that on Africlane clearing. Okay. I saw him doing it with an armored elephant. Or will you have a co-caster later on? Uh, it's not confirmed. It's not confirmed. Depends on how the peeps are uh, are available in terms of time. Going to be sp spontaneous. For tomorrow, I seem to have something. Com uh, someone confirmed there. Yeah. Okay, we have a nice fight going on here. Both players are micring nicely, trying to dodge the uh, the, the arrows. But obviously, Dark he is really trying to force an engagement because he's not going to do anything with those skirms and and the archers he doesn't want to uh, to uh, upgrade them right but for dugao as he's bohemians he wants to go for the crossbow line especially after adding the second archer range you should know that there is something planned here from your opponent that he wants to commit to uh, range units very heavily we have the first armor upgrade for Dark on his cavalry. And I really like the aggression which which Dark is putting onto uh, to Gao right now. Gao, he is forced to go for a siege workshop here. And yeah, Dark is taking some damage here. From those knights, uh, on those knights. T90 and Jordan looks like a dream casting team. Maybe I have the T90 tomorrow. We will see, we'll see tomorrow, guys. Great uh, ground attack by Dark. I'm not sure if it was a conscious ground attack or if he just clicked the first villager or attacked the first villager and he hit by accident the two following ones. But yeah, this is looking very nice for Dugao. And I think. Dugao, yeah, he, he has to defend now with Mangonels himself. And you never want to be in the position where the Mangonel Knight player puts on the aggression onto you. As the crossbow Mangonel player. You want to switch away, you want to have monks as well. And that's exactly what Dugao is doing right now. And also, don't forget guys, Bohemians have the uh, ability to go for redemption. So they can in theory do something there. Dugao, he was able to kill one Mangonel here. And Dugao, he's going for a castle here. That's going to be a great defense here. That's definitely going to be a good one. And yeah, Dark is being sloppy here. I feel like he is... Uh, you know, if, you, if you're putting on that kind of aggression, you also need to ensure that you have uh, the focus also on the mangonels in the front because losing those mangonels for free is really hurting a lot. And it's also frustrating. It's definitely frustrating. The knights, I don't think, are going to be able to accomplish too much here. Dugao is doing great uh, quick walls here. And Dark is losing the third one! He's losing the third one! And is he losing the fourth one? No, he's not. But man, that, that is a bummer. That must be a bummer for Dark here. I mean, he still has two villagers more. About to get more kills here. But, hallelujah, what is Doubt, uh, Doubt Dugao doing here? He was just uh, click uh, moving his crossbows without attacking anything, and that monk is going no. Mm. This is the best of five. Do you want? Okay, one sec. I I will just put it here. Best of five. So everyone, so that is clear. Looks like doubt indeed. Now Dark has gotten one kill without losing the Mangonel. 
So that will make him feel a bit better. You know, guys, I can talk from experience as I'm a, I'm a professional player. If you're trading Magnals inefficiently, that is one of the most annoying things out there. Because it's not like the Magnal is cheap. It is a, an expensive unit. And the yeah, Dark is going to lose those knights here, I would assume. Especially if the... What? There was no conversion! And Dark is not due to using the knights. He has them on stand ground. In the meanwhile, they are both microing here. Yeah, Dugao is losing that one as well. One for one trade. But yeah, Dark is not paying attention here. You can definitely you can definitely tell that Dark, he is still... He needs to work on his macro a bit in order to, uh, to make things really complicated for his opponents, right? Stand ground knights are the best knights here. Let's see how focused he's going to be on that one. Is he going to pick off that monk? No, he was not paying attention there. And yeah, now the monk is pushing those knights away. But overall, look at that. We have Dark having 3,300 score. To Gao, 3,100 almost. So Dark has a lead there. And he also has 58 villagers against 47. So he definitely has a much better economy there. And he also, also wheelbarrow himself. To Gao, he doesn't have wheelbarrow. He doesn't have horse color. But he has the second wood upgrade in Castle Age. So I'm not entirely sure. I think in terms of the upgrades, they're not too far away from each other. And oh, there's a castle going to be built here. And to Gao, he was not paying attention. He could have maybe denied that castle here. Oh, how did that one not die? How on world is this not dead yet? Okay, he needs to re uh, repair that mangonel. And let's see how successful Dark is going to be. Nice trade here. So Dark has come up clutch in this situation. And he is able to get this castle up. The mangonel is going to bite the dust here. There's nothing he can do against that castle. But... Overall, Dark is getting himself a very nice position on the map. Dugao, I feel like Dugao is playing a bit sloppy here. Losing the Manganel here. The Monk, is it even having HP in the castle? Yes, it does. And yeah, Dugao now finally trying to switch the focus. How many crossbows are in there? Seven. They should not be able to fight against that army. Because four knights should be able to stomp that. If that were 13 crossbows, that's a different topic. But only 7? That's not too scary there. Dark, nice reaction here. He's going for the chain boarding armor himself. Not sure if I like that move because that will delay his imp time. And I feel like with that castle here in the front, you definitely want to get a faster imp time in order for you to be able to pressure Dugao's castle. Dugao going for a castle on the north hand side as well. So his economy is going to be very safe. But he's also, like, he's not too far away from clicking in Prillage as well. Dark should be able to clean this army now very easily. At least in theory, because he has shame boarding armor. He's not using all his knights though. Dugao microing back. Yeah, but that, that should be just too overwhelming for the Gao. And then li even the lion joins the fray here. Even the lion. And yeah. These skirms and crossbows, they are going to go to uh, heaven. So, Boso coming up for dark as well. His economy just feels a bit smoother. 15 villages more. However, Dugao he is going to be going up to Imprilage a bit faster than Dark. And I think in this situation, it would be better to save the Bosa, go for Imprilage first, and then go for the Wood Upgrade. Because getting the faster Imprilage is so, so crucial. The good thing for Dark is that he's the one applying the pressure with the castle and not Dugao, right? So... If you're losing the front castle, it's not going to be as bad as if you were the defending player and you lose the castle. Because that most of the time leads to a GG. This is re these are recorded games. Yeah, Dugao now is being pushed away by this Mangonel. 
And yeah, Dark is just roughly one minute behind. So the castle fight should definitely be in favor of Dugao. But Dugao, he doesn't have any eco upgrades. And that's something which is very interesting to witness. That people, you know, in tournament situations, they are not playing as clean as they do usually in ranked games. And that is just such a mental part, right? It is really hard to pull off a great performance in tournaments as well because the pressure is on the line and it gets to you. It definitely gets to you. We see another castle being placed here by Dark. At least that is the idea he's having. And now I'm wondering what Dark is going to do once Dugao is in Imperial Age. I mean, he sees the Archer range is coming up. So I think Dark is aware of what could in theory happen, right? Well, let's see. We also have Chemistry coming in for Dugao. Just a little bit late. Ideally, he has Chemistry finished once Imperial Age finishes as well. And if I was du Dark, I would abandon that castle. I think one of the biggest difference, uh, differences in these in this matchup is that Bohemians have access to Bombard Cannons and Slavs they don't, right? So it's going to be hard to counter those Bombard Cannons. Usually what I love to do is to go for Redemption Monks with the extra range. So they have the same range as Bombard Cannons or one less depending if the civilization has the Siege Engineers. Yeah, so let's see. We have also Conscription, which came in already for Dugao as well, and that is a beautiful move. Because that will boost his production quite a lot. What should Dark go for? Hmm. He's going for Light Cavalry, and I'm not the biggest fan of that. Maybe he's expecting... In, in his shoes, I would go for Cavalry, because he has 40 on farms. He should have add a bit more on, on gold. And then you hope to hit a good timing attack. Because in the long run, Dugao wants to have Halberdiers. He does not have the economy for that just yet. He has 1 or 3 villagers for Dark and 74 for Dugao. So Dugao is trailing behind uh, by 30 villagers and that's quite a lot. And guys, Dark has proven me wrong. He was right to add the second castle here. He killed the castle of Dugao very fast, with the, especially with the two ramps which have been added. And now, Dark going for handcart, going for plate burning armor. He is in a lovely position. He's leading 1700 in score. And that's uh, definitely beautiful for him. And he's going to be able to snipe off those uh, trebuchet with the light calf. And he has to switch now to skirms as well. Because Dugao is going for full pikemen now. He's not looking too much to get those arbalests because he doesn't have the economy to do so but he needs to go for the skirms now that's important it affects repair <coughs> let's see how long that trebuchet is going to survive here we have hustler coming in as well for dark and you know when you see your opponent having hustler already that's always going to be a bit of a blow to you because that tells you, okay, he definitely has a good economy behind that. You're not able to afford a Hussars if you don't have a good economy. And we have Horse Collar now coming in for Dugao. So he's uh, quite late on that one. Quite late on that one. Yeah, we have a little Jebuche fight going on. And indeed, Dark is not switching to Skirms. He's fully playing Hussar. And I don't think that's the right choice. Maybe his lead is still big enough that he will be able to overpower it. But the pikemen from uh, Bohemians, they're attacking 25% faster. Or not attacking faster, but they deal 25% more bonus damage against the Hussars. Or against cavalry in general. And that's why this is never going to end well for, for Dark here. <clears throat> Dugao needs to be cautious. He needs to use those pikemen very efficiently and very smartly 
Because if the Hustlers are able to pick off those Bomber Cannons, you know, Dark, he can he can make those kind of bad trades, throw away the unit, because he has enough economy to sustain that. To go out on the other side, not so much. And yeah, both players are fully focusing here on the south side. <coughs> now the guy is also repairing. And that's something which also is very good for him. Slaps don't get hand cannon here. Snow. Skirms need it. The good old Skirms need it. Yeah, now Dugao, you know, he's 2,000 score behind. Which is quite a lot. But he's able to push that castle down. And he is going to be able to kill this castle as well. And then and all of a sudden, we will have a very... I don't want to say equal game because the economy difference is just so huge. But we will be in a game where at least this position, <coughs> Dugao was able to to clean that one up, right? That way he will have at least a bit more uh, breathing room for him. <coughs> yeah, now Dark is trying to get some ratings in. That's exactly what he needs to do. Mm, Scums feel better. It feels pretty bad without Bracer. Help plus Rams could work as well too. Nope. Scums for the win. Skirms for the win. Uh, okay, so Dark, he is being pushed away and now and all of a sudden we only have a discrepancy in this score of 1300 instead of the initial 2000. So Dugao is catching up. But he's not catching up in terms of economy, he's catching up because he has just overpowered military and Dark. And that's, that's the thing. <clears throat> you can have great macro abilities, but the decision making part is just such an important thing. And Dark is sometimes lacking the right strategicals, uh, strategical decisions here. He will try to make the best out of his hustlers, and that's exactly what he needs to do. But if he's not tacking into skirms. Yeah, okay, he finally is doing that. Oh, he's going for cap archers! For slaps! I mean, uh, he has the gold for that. Or well, he doesn't really, but... He's not spending too much on gold. At least in the game, so far. Honestly going to go down. And... Wow. He has a lot of military. Yeah, I, like, I don't see any... Any way how Dark can lose this game. <laughs> Dark watched uh, doubt too much, yeah. Hey, Dark is forced to retreat here with the villagers. And to God, it feels like he's getting more and more sp space on the map. But then again, if we look at the overall village account, 68 against 140 war, uh, 44. And that is a very scary number to look at. Like, every economy Dogao has is on this spot here right now. And he has so many Isles, 24 Isles, Isles against 25. So literally he has 44 villagers working right now. I lost the TC here, Ballistics coming in. And yeah, we are missing the army upgrades for the CA. And look at that, the score difference, 1000 remaining. Only 1000 remaining. I mean, I understand, like Slavs are really struggling against Bohemians. In Imperial Age. But we are not at the stage yet where the deadly Bohemian's army is out on the field yet. That's just not the case. Okay, and Dugao, he's not going to be able to save those bomber cannons, is he? Like, <clears throat> Dark is really committed to, to get those. And guys, I'm not even sure, but I think Slavs don't have access to Thumbring, do they? And Dark, he's always trading so inefficiently. He's trading so inefficiently. Look at that. The trap going to be sniped, yes. I mean, he has double the village account. 71, 142. That's proper. But uh, no thumb ring, no bracer. Yeah, that, that means if you don't have bracer, uh, if you don't have thumb ring, your CA are so, so blind. <laughs> they are very inaccurate. And that's why you usually don't see CA being played by Slavs. 75 wood on... 
Uh, for for dark on wood, yeah. Seven to five fully just there. We have uh, the pikemen trying to get in some ratings. One thousand score lead for dark. So Dugao, he is really trying to get back into this game here. A lot of castles are coming in for Dugao, uh, for dark, on left hand side. I am pretty sure Dugao should have full awareness here. No, he doesn't even have town watch yet. Oof, 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 oof. So he will be surprised there. And now we have heavy cav archers. We have skirms. Was was skirms researched as well? I think he was researching skirms as well, right? Maybe he has. Maybe he has cancelled that. <coughs> and they don't have part in tactics as well. Yeah. I mean, still fighting against the cav archers is going to be a scary thing for now. Dugao, he has, he's catching up in the village account. 90 now. So he needs roughly 30 more to be very comfortable in this position. Yeah, and the bombing cannons, they're very hard to engage into. We see Dugao coming up with the quick walls here. Nicely done by him. He's deleting that farm as well. He obviously wants to prevent the Hussars to come in to snipe those, this trebuchet. And... Yeah, that, that's exactly what Dark needs to do right now. He needs to take advantage of the good position he has on the map. And he needs to spread out his units. He needs to try everything he can to distract the Gao, right? As long as he can raid well with the Hussars, he is still going to be okay. Just due to the fact that he has such a beautiful economy behind that. This bombard cannon is not going to go down. Dark has not paid attention there. And now he's going back there. Elite Skirms coming in for Dugao as well. Yeah, and that's not really something you want to be doing as Bohemians. Don't really want to go for uh, the Elite Skirms there. Dugao doesn't even have Nisa. Yeah, oh, of course not, right? He just doesn't have the economy to sustain that. And we have Dark at 180 population against uh, 112 for Dugao. This seems like a GG moment right there, doesn't it? We have on the north side, Dugao about to lose the castle as well. On the south side, that castle is going to be pushed as well. We have 19 army for Dugao. So he's really struggling, guys, to get out the numbers on the field. He has a bombard cannon. These bombard cannons are such a lovely tool to snipe the trebuchet of your opponent. <coughs> but doesn't feel like Dugao is going to have the army to defend this bombard, bombard, can, uh, bombard cannon, especially since Dark is repairing that one as well. Last Vernon's coming in as well, and we have two men saw coming in as well for Dark. Yeah, Dark, it feels like he's in a perfect situation. And this, in, uh, in general, is the perfect moment right now to build ramps as well for Dark. And that should be the way to go. But I don't think it's, it is needed. Dugao is running out of steam. And I am confident that we will see him soon tabbing out of this one because Dark, he's claiming the position on the north side. He's claiming the one on the south side as well. And indeed, guys, Dark has claimed the first victory of the first set today. Nicely played by him. There were just a small mistakes in terms of the macro. Also, not transitioning into the skirms um, in the right time, I would say. But other than that, very good build order, very good cast age timing. Um, also, very nice aggression with the Magnals. Was a bit sloppy with the Magnals, but overall it was the right uh, strategy. And that one put Dugao always into the defensive uh, position. So, yeah, very nicely done. Let's take a quick look at the stats. Military-wise, we have <laughs> a preferably... Uh, raid uh, trade for Dugao as yeah Dark he he was throwing away a lot of hustles there but that was fine he he was able to do so and let's take a look at the economy it's just insane thirty thousand resources more collected for Dark that kind of tells the tale okay good guys we will be jumping into game number two in a second let me quickly get that. I mean, we want to be as efficient as possible. Good. 
Let me load that one up real quick. Okay. Good, guys. So, we have Dugao playing here in the red trunks as Kaltz. And we have on the other side, Dark playing as Bulgarians in the blue trunks. And the map is called Naivasha. And that is the map which has been added from the map contest. And I just felt like this is such a great map. I, you know, for me it was, imp uh, was important to have hybrid maps, <clears throat> but ideally having new hybrid maps. And the one I used before that was uh, Kavasan. And when uh, this map was designed, I was like, I fell in love with that one Im immediately because uh, it feels like it has a great aspect. Let me introduce the map to you guys. So we have here wood scattered around a bit so it's not the, the clean forest it has a little bit of holes in there as well which makes the likelihood of holes when you're trying to wall a bit higher and also we in the middle have a lake which doesn't have too much fish so it means that if you're committing heavily to water it's not always guaranteed that it's going to pay out not for example like baltic or mediterranean and the the biggest characteristic of the map is that both sides, on the left hand side and on the right hand side, we have gold and stone piles distributed all over the place. So on this map, it is going to be very important to hold control of the middle, uh, of the sides and of the middle, right? So let's see what we are going to see from both players here. So Dugao, he is going for... I think both players will go for Doc at the beginning. That's just the meta. And I don't really see a barrack opening. I don't think the the reward would be too uh, too high there. And yeah, the Doc opening. And then we will most likely see Grush from both players. So Duga was successful in laming two sheep here. Both scouts are now, now finding each other. And Dugao, he doesn't want to take any risk here. He's going for the hill. And yeah, du Dugao, he, he doesn't want, right? He wants to be safe. I think that is the right choice. Dugao is one of the smarter players. He wants to, uh, um, you know, use his scouting information to adapt his gameplay. Viper is not in the tournament, no. Oh, and that is very interesting that Dugao even was thinking about doing that. He has uh, lost 12 HP now for nothing. That, that was not a good choice by him. Dugao, he has his dock up already. I mean, uh, I guess his build is a bit cleaner as well. But overall, Kels will have the advantage there because they're cutting wood faster. And Dugao, he has four in wood only. Instead of the five you usually see for play uh, for players when you're do going for dock opening. And yeah, Dugao, he is forced to run all the time now. <clears throat> he is forced to run, guys. We also saw that Dugao, he has pushed two deer into the TC. So his build is going to be very clean. Usually what we see is players going up with 20 villagers or 19. But 19 usually means that you have to have some idle TC. Except your build is 100% perfect. So Dugao is trying to do so. So he's going up with 19 villagers. Well, not 19 villagers, 18 villagers. Sorry about that. And his food count looks good. Looks healthy. Is he going to be able to... Yeah, he has... Okay, three seconds of the LTC. That's something you can completely neglect, right? So very strong build here by Dugao. He's going to be able to up into Fuel Age so, so quickly. And on the other side, we have Dark. He is just going up for Loom. So he will have two villagers more than Dugao. Which means that he's going to be... Heavily behind on the water play. Look, he's going up now. He's 50 seconds behind Dugao. And that means Dugao will most likely be able to uh, clinch the water. Three fishing boats for Dugao. We have also three fishing boats for Dark. 
And I would assume that Doga wants to add a second dog here. He's not showing any signs of going for land aggression. Yeah, second dog coming up now for Dark uh, for Dogao. And from Dark, I'm expecting the same. Yeah, he's sending a second villager now. To build the dock. Yeah, Dogao will definitely get the advantage here. Uh Palace Gate was planted here by Dark, but yeah, that obviously doesn't. That uh, doesn't work too well here. Gao going for double bedax. He will have galley opening as well. So he will be able to snipe the fishing boats much faster because the galleys are doing 10 damage per hit against the fishing boat. While the fire galleys, they are not that good at killing fishing boats, right? They're just not that good at it. I think they're taking or dealing 2 damage per second. Something like that. Also, I'm wondering if Dugao is planning to add a third dog, or is he going for blacksmith, or is he going for barrack? That's something we will see in a second. We have also Dark going for the galleys, and we will pay close attention to this fight here. Because <clears throat> one fishing boat is going to go down 100%. Second one could be going down as well. But no, Dugao, he's focusing on the galley. And I think that's the right decision. Uh, he already knows he has two galleys coming up as well pretty soon. And he is going to be very comfortable how this position or how this game is going so far. Dark is going to lose that, that uh, galley most likely as well. And we have Fletching coming up for Dark, so that is is go uh, going to give him a bit of a better micro possibility. But yeah, he's just guaranteed to lose all the fishing boats. And now Dugao, he has to run, I would say, because he doesn't have Fletching. But he's already happy with the situation. He was able to snipe all the three fishing boats. And while they are fighting, Dugao is fishing. Oh, and Dark is doing a good job. He, he was able to save that one. New civilizations are allowed, yes. And Dugao, he's now walling himself. So, Dark has managed to kill one fishing boat. And let's see. Doesn't have fletching yet. Dugao is a bit late with adding the, the blacksmith here. Really late in that one. Yeah, I think Dark should have the better situation just due to the fact that he is fletching here. The scout is uh, living a dangerous life. Very dangerous life. <clears throat> and the wall is going to go up. Oh no. <laughs> Dark, that was a nice timing. Oh, that is so unfortunate. That is so unfortunate for Dugao. And he's not going to be able to save the villager in time. No. Yeah, the scout almost dead. 1 HP? 1 HP? Really? Really? Uh, Dugao is 4 villages behind. Like, villager villagers, right? Eh, interesting. How, how did that happen? Like, the KD is... Eco KD 3 to 1. So he has... He has a huge... Adult TC time. Now we see a big engagement and that should be much better for Dugao. He has much more galleys here. Seven against the three. And yeah, Dark has been cleaned up. The problem for Dark is that he has invested into the three docks. So that means that he is not going to be investing the wood somewhere else. And that's going to be pretty rough on him. I forgot to mention that Dark was playing with Bulgarian. Sorry with that about that guys. Yeah, Kals is obviously stronger on the hybrid maps. They are uh, the, the fact that they are able to cut the wood faster is just such hel so helpful. And Dugao did the right decision here, splitting up the fishing boats. Dark will be able to kill those two fishing boats, but he's going to most likely lose all the galleys in the process. He is going to lose all of them in the process. We have 
Darek continuing to go for the water play. While Dugao is adding the two archer ranges here. Don't like the the positioning too much though. I think I would build them here just to have it centered to be able to go to spots faster. Dark also scouting now with the one HP scout. How well is the scouting? Ah, oh, Dark, he wants to kill that fishing boat. He knows exactly that that one is still alive there. Nicely done by Dark. So you can say to Gao, he, he was uh, using those fishing boats a bit more efficiently. But guys, Dark is up to Gunslage. What is happening? And he has four villagers more. How? How is that possible? Dugao spread himself to pin there. It kind of looks like that. And now if Dark adds a stable. That should be pretty nice for him. Does he have... Oh, he's going for Krapos, most likely. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Dugao, he sees that. Is he reacting? Yeah, he reacts. He sees those two villagers. And now he's splitting those up. Send one archer here as well. Ooh, oof, 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 oof. That hurts. That definitely hurts for Dark. He could have had something very nicely done in the, in the front. But, yeah, it's not happening. And now he's adding a barrack. So he wants to go for stable. But that stable is going to be a bit too late. Because archers are going to be there already. And Dark, he's not walling himself. Why is he not walling himself? That is literally asking your opponent to get in there. Whoa, he managed to get the wall. Oh, God. That was, that was a close one. It could have gone either way. And if he's not getting that wall up... He's not going to get the stables up. And it feels like Dark. And he should be able to get the stables up. However, if you're cult in this situation, you'll just be rubbing in your hands and be like, okay, I'm cult. So I can go for a fast pike. And that's totally fine for me. Eco upgrades coming in. Both saw gold mining camp and chain boarding armor here for Dark. So he's uh, having a good economy, right? It was a bit sloppy that he was sending in the villagers just like blindly. Whoa, and he has added the plus two already as well. I think that is a bit too fast. He's adding two docks here as well. So he wants to really claim the position on the border. But Dugao, he has not invested anything into uh, fishing boats at all. And these two archers are going to pi uh, pick off these, uh, this one villager. And Dugao, he is able to equalize the village account here. 38 to 39. He's going for crossbows though. And I'm not the biggest fan of the crossbows. Because for me personally, it feels like when your opponent has... Yeah, okay. Now nah, it makes sense. He has 10 crossbows. Scratch that thought. He doesn't have, bot uh, he doesn't have uh, botkin yet. And if he doesn't have botkin, he is doing 2 damage against those knights. And another villager is going to go down. And another vill- What? Dugao? Hello? Dugao? <laughs> Not paying attention. He's passing. They were kissing each other. <laughs> Nico, if you like that one, huh? <laughs> yeah, that that's something which... You know, it can happen. It can definitely happen, but... It should not. I mean, a lot of things are going on. <laughs> Dugao must be looking at this be like, come on. And look, this villager is gonna cause so much havoc. I already see it ha happening. He's going to add a siege workshop and he's gonna take it from there. Let's see. There is a gap. So Dugao is going to be accepting that one very happily. And he's also gotten the conversion in. Is Dar has Dark dropped from the game? No, he has not. <laughs> but it felt like that. What was going on? Like, he's committing so much to water right now. Where he is completely... 
completely getting wrecked on land and his economy is not existing anymore. His economy is literally not existing anymore. He also is going to lose that knight. And that knight is going to do some damage now as well on the villagers. Man, this is complete disastrous for Dark. Dugao has a huge lead, 3,600 against the 3,000 score for Dark. Nice quick wall here by Dark. But, man, is there a wall? No, okay. Never mind. But, oh boy. How did that happen? I'm just wondering. Dark was in such a good position. And now he's completely falling apart. Yes, he's getting the control of the water. But, like, yeah, two fishing boats. But that's all about it. I mean, I understand it, right? You don't know exactly how many fishing boats your opponent is going to build. And most of the time, if you're winning water, you want to build fishing boats in order to get the reward for the huge investment. But, yeah, in this case, Dark has opted to go for strategy, which has not really given him the reward. And he lost so many villages in the process. Look at that. He lost overall 20, no, 7... Let's take a look again. 16 villagers have been killed by Dugao this game. 17. 18. And Dark, he is really struggling right now. He doesn't really have a safe wood line except the one in the south. But I'm not even sure if you can declare that one as a uh, safe one. Uh, he has a siege workshop here in the front. He wants to try something with the, with the Magnal aggression. But... Don't forget, guys, Dugao, he has tacked up two pikemen already. And he is going to build them right now as well. He has no idea about that aggression on the right-hand side. He sees now for the first time, if I'm not mistaken, the monastery. But it feels to me that Dugao is getting himself a position where he's just not able to fall behind anymore. And these constant ratings from Dugao are very efficient as well. Is he walking in there? No, okay. He is paying attention there. But the knights in theory should be able to clean this now. We're not... Like, Dugao, he still doesn't have Botkin here. And these knights are plus two. So, in theory, they should be able to clean that very easily. Two pikemen, even then, they should be able to do so. There's a knight though. So, yeah, I, I would not engage that as dark. Let's see if I'm right with that idea. Go! Go! Ah. Yeah, not having botkin definitely is a huge deal. Siege workshop coming up as a defense for Dugao. And... Okay, Dark is adding fishing boats. That's nice. But another raid is coming in. And now that army is going to be merged. We will have around 18 crossbows then on the field. Dugao going for wheelbarrow, man, he's, he is looking good. He has a uh, bow saw, he has uh, about wheelbarrow coming in as well. And now he has to stop that aggression here. He has 570 stone in the bank as well. So he will be able to defend with a castle soon as well if that is necessary. But I don't really think that's even necessary. I mean, with Keld, you will have a easier job to defend with Siege compared to Bam. Exactly, that's why. I'm just kidding. That was just the first uh, shot. But yeah, Kel's Siege are refiring faster. 25%. And that Krapos, guys, I'm not sure how well that is going to be doing. I love that moment where you're moving your Mangonel, you know, watching. Your opponent tries to hit you. He doesn't hit you because you're moving. And then you realize it and attack. That's the best. It could be mind games, right? And now we see a huge aggression coming in for Dark. But I'm not sure how well that is going to be. And well, he has five knights here. So he should in theory be able to clean that one up. And the Magnal took another hit onto that villager. And the pikemen, they need to be focused on the knights. And that's exactly what Dugao is doing right now. That's exactly what he's doing. And then meanwhile, the crossbows are causing so much havoc. On Darkus economy and that castle that one is going to go up before the crap post and I don't think these villagers are in range here are they it doesn't look to me like that yeah they're not and now that crap post is going to go up but 
Yeah, like, wh what does it really accomplish too much? And we will have rams coming in as well. Dugao, he has 81 villagers. 52 for dark. And Dugao, he doesn't know of this. He doesn't really see that as well, right? With the new patch, you don't see those anymore. He wants to add another Krapos tier. He's missing one stone, isn't he? Or is it 350 stone? I think it's 350. Never mind then. I thought it was 375 at the beginning. Yeah, Botkin coming in now for Dark. Why would he go for Botkin? I mean, having extra range, of of course, is nice for, for the Krapos. But it's not like it's something I would be investing in if my economy is so fragile. And yeah, these crapos, uh, these crossbows are now in here as well, trying to defend. And I think this is the moment where Dark is calling the GG. Because the aggression he's going for is completely... Completely, uh, stopped. Is that knight going to kill that mang now? Oh, that hit. That hit was beautiful. And to Gao, he's opting to go for the raid again. Uh, it's, it's interesting how this is playing out. Imperial Age coming in for Dogao though. 91 villagers. He has a 30 villager lead. He has a 26 army lead. And he has overall, for those people who have calculated, a roughly 55 population lead. And also keep in mind... Dark has nine fishing boats. And those bad boys have to run or drive or swim a long, long way. A long, long distance in order to get to the fish. So they're not really to sail. Uh, okay, sail is sail. Thank you, guys. I've never been a salesman. So I don't have the proper vocabulary there. We have another Krapos come in for... For dark, at least he was trying to, but uh, I don't think that one is going to go up. What is? What are the odds, guys, and that Dugao is going to uh, prevent that Krapos to go up? Yeah, very, very high. And dark, he is forced to tap out of this one. Ah, super questionable for me because dark seemed to me to have such a good position on the map, and it felt to me that. When Dugao's archers came in here and Dark let him in there was where everything fell apart. That that is kind of my analyze. So Dark definitely had some slip-offs there. I felt like he did a great job when it was about transitioning into uh, into the castle age. It was so much faster than Dugao. He also had a much cleaner economy for me. It looked like he had four villagers less, uh, more, right? Um, so yeah, it is surprising that he fell behind so quickly. But I guess that's because of the gap there. Dugao was just able to get so much uh, damage in. And also he committed, Dark committed quite heavily onto the border. <laughs> okay, good guys. We're jumping into game number three. This time it is Dark's home map, Grand Barra. And let me quickly introduce the players before I will talking about the map. So, we have Dugao here playing in the red trunks as Kimmer on the left hand side of the map. And then we have on the right hand side Dark playing the blue trunks as Teutons. So, this map is also a very crazy one. It's 1-1 one -one because Dugao lost the first game. It's a crazy one. Let me tell you how it is build up we have a forest which is working like a circle and that circle forest is dividing the middle from the outside and the middle is in a crater it's a huge crater which is enriched with all the relics and all the gold there is on the map except two gold piles or four gold piles on each player space we also have a bit of stone there on the high ground. Additional stones here as well. Are there additional stones here? Here is one. And here is one. Not too much. There is no stone in the middle. And all there is is gold. Why I like this map 
compared to, for example, Gold Rush is that here it feels like the gold is distributed a bit larger. So that means if you are taking a control of a certain position, you, the other player still has a possibility to come back because he has a way to go get access to gold from a different angle. Okay, so strategy wise, I, I don't really know what the best strategy is. Ideally, you would like to wall your opponent in, right? That is the, the dream scenario, but I don't think it should be viable. Because every player should try to get out of the map as soon as possible. And that's also something we see Dark doing now. He's going for the forest here, which only has two wood piles. I'm surprised he's not chopping out immediately. Yes, usually what you want to do is go with those, those two villagers um, onto this wood. And yeah, I forgot to talk about the terrain. Yeah, exactly. This terrain here is a specific one. Guys, you have to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if you are having buildings on this terrain, you're taking 25% more damage. That way, it is also easier to break through um, certain fortifications. It's 25%, right? You don't have the time to wall someone in. You could be mistaken about what, that one. Because look at the, the Gao. He's already chopping this last tree. While... Dark, he is still away from the first tree. So he will, in theory, have the time to do so. It's pretty sick, yeah. I think Rossini has designed this one. And yeah, I, I don't know what the best strategy here is. Uh, we could see a field play, uh, scouts into towers and try to tower up your opponent. We could see... Uh, ignore the middle completely, go for 3-4 TC's boom. And try to take it from there. We could see a fast castle into crossbow siege. We could see fast castle into night siege. I, I, I don't really know what is going to be played here. And what we see is Dugawa going up to fuel age in a, mo in a moment. Because he's going for 18 villagers. He's going for loom now. And that is the indicator that he continues building villagers. Don't ask me, seriously. Why did he go for loom? That's because he's sending out a villager there. Can you wall behind your opponent tree line? Yeah. You go, he's out on the map. So he can, he can wall there. If he is in time. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's going to be in time though. Because the guy, obviously, he doesn't know where his opponent is. And Tugao, he's going for the walls now. I guess that's why he went for Loom. He went for Loom because he wanted to wall with his villager. And he didn't want to take the risk of losing the villager if a uh, scout was there. And is, this is going to be a close one. No, no, Dark will be able to... Uh, Dark will be able to uh, get out in time, guys. Can you chop into the middle? Yes. Guys, you can always see the map names here. Grand Barra, it's called. And yeah, Dark has managed to chop himself out. Is he... Dugao, he's not paying attention. Ah, uh, okay. Do I like that move? Uh, you can uh, utilize that one as well. Overlay blocks would count on the tree. Would count on the tree. Would count on the tree. Huh? Oh, okay. If I have it here, you mean. Like, where is it set? Yeah, okay, okay, got it. Then we will push this away here. Now you should be able to see it. Okay, so Dark, he has deleted this gate. And that's why I was not the biggest fan of the gate. It's easy to counter, right? And that's literally 25 wood. <gasps> oh, look how he's walling this one in. He has to send more villagers now. Dark trying to do a good move here. How successful is that going to be though? I'm not sure. I don't think too much, is it? Yeah, Dark, he is going to be fine. He is going to be fine. But that, that is the thing with with Grandpara. That one can be very nasty sometimes. Can be very, very nasty. 
Idle to villages. You cannot really like no no no. That that doesn't work like that. You can make the argument uh, Dogar has one villager idle for so much longer than these two villagers were idle. So that that doesn't work. We have Dugao going up to Castle Age in a second. He doesn't have food. He's adding one more villager. No, go for Castle Age right away. Yeah, he has enough. Yeah. He has enough. Going up for Castle Age now. And that is a huge bonus for Kamura. That they are capable of going to their next ages without building any buildings. And that's something which never works with other civilization. With in Dark Age, you need two, bu uh, two buildings to go into Feudal Age, and that's the same. In Feudal Age, you need two buildings or two Feudal Age buildings to go to Castle Age, and that's the same in, in uh, Castle Age, except the building is a castle. Um, so yeah, that is a huge, a huge advantage for Khmer, and therefore Dugao is going to be able to uh, be in Castle Age so much faster than Dark. And Dark, he's going for a stable right now, and he should be able to go to Castle Age pretty soon as well. We can see a slip off by Dark. He has so much food already in the bank. And he's not clicking up to Castle Age. So I think he was two villagers too slow to go up to Castle Age. That's what my gut feeling tells me right now. So let's see. Usually what you want to do here as Dugao, I think, would be to go for... Either you go... Yeah, I think it makes sense to go stable here and add TCs in the meanwhile. <coughs> Sorry for that. He doesn't have a second building? No, he has. What is his second building? That's a blacksmith. Yeah, you were not really able to see that. And I'm surprised he's going for that wood line instead of there. There's so much more wood here. Accessible. Compared to this one. So that's not something I'm agreeing with. Khmer struggle against Teutons and post -imp. Yeah, Teutons completely uh, wreck Khmer and post -imp. So, Dugao has to try everything he can in order to get himself the proper position on this map. He is going to build a TC here, where the wood line is being cut right now. Exactly there. And now we will have the scouts fighting against each other. We have also a knight coming out as well for, for Dugao. And it feels to me like Dugao, he just wants to try to do some little aggression here. Try to prevent Dark from getting any TCs up on this map. And we see Dark, he is willing to add some aggression again. TC coming up for Dugao, Kamur, and uh, Horse Color coming in as well for Dugao. He has five on gold so far. And we see quick walls here being done by, by Dark, and he is indeed adding a monastery. So he wants to put on the aggression with a monastery. He has a lot of resources in the bank. So we will see another monastery coming up uh, coming up for dark. No additional TCs have been added so far. Also, something you gotta keep in mind, he doesn't have too much gold miners. So he will not be able to produce too many monks here. And if you're going for two monast monasteries, you definitely want to ensure that you have the economy to support that. The problem is, Dugao has spotted that right now. And that means that he can easily be adding scouts. And the scouts are just a beautiful tool to fight off against the, mon uh, the monks. So I would say positioning should be a bit better for Dark uh, for Dugao here. And is he really is Dugao really committing here? Oh, he should not. He should not. He's going to lose one knight. Yeah, that was not worth it for Dugao. He literally traded one uh, villager for one knight here. And while it's not even traded, he also, you know, his opponent got that one. But of course, it was Dugao didn't have the information which we had right now. Okay, we have a second TC coming up for Dark as well. He's uh, getting gold mining upgrade as well. And he only has six on food though, so he will not be able to sustain that. He needs to build another, a lot of farms, and that's exactly what he's doing right now. Dugao being housed at 45 population. He has three TCs going strong here. While Dark should be having three TCs pretty soon as well. And something which I would personally like to see from either player is 
that they will try to get themselves into a nice castle. Oh no! Oh no! No! What? We lost all the scouts! We lost all the scouts, guys! No way! No! What was that? Seriously, was what what was that? He even gifted, he even gifted uh, the the scout there. Are you insane? That should never happen. I guess to go he completely abandoned abandoned the situation already, right? Which is understandable. He had all the scouts trapped and thought like, okay. I can focus on something else, which is more important. Ooh, that was... That was hurting. That was definitely hurting. 46 villages against the 42. We have uh, Dugao having an idle TC time of 7 minutes almost. And Dark having 44 seconds. So it feels like Dark's setup seems to be a bit better. And now we have a lot of knights here by Dark. What he wants to add, yeah, he has added uh, touching dogs. Thank you so much for the 20 gifted subs. Appreciate it, my sir. Um, so we have the siege workshop coming up for Dark now as well. And that is exactly the thing he needs to do. And I think, guys, Dark is going to be in a great position. Because honestly, let's talk about it. What can Dugao do right now? He has two stables. Producing light calf right now. That is good, going to be a good counter of the kitchen stream. Nice. Uh, that's going to be a go good counter to the monks. But he cannot really fight against the knights right now. And we have both players at 51 population right now. However, Dogao, he doesn't have the second wood upgrade yet. And he doesn't have wheelbarrow yet as well. However, Dark has that to his... Uh, has that already, right? So... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Especially if now the Mangonel is coming in. Dugao has 460 stone though. So he will be able to defend himself with a castle. And then he should be fine again in theory. Because there is no way Dark can pressure anymore. Uh, after the castle has been planted. Knight going to go down. We see those three scouts going to be chased away as well from the knight there. And we have Light Cavalry coming in as well. And Dugao is losing all the Light Cavalry. I feel like Dugao is playing a bit of a sloppy game here. He has not been on point so far. Usually Dugao is, you know, one of the best best. Oh, 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 is that a Doubt Castle? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. And now Dark he has complete vision of that. Oh, that is a doubt castle, isn't it? That must be a doubt castle. That is such a doubt castle. Wow. Oh, Dugao, he could lose the game right there. He's losing so many villagers. Now he desperately tries to get the castle up, but he will not be able to do so. He's losing so many villagers in the process. And the TC is being tackled again as well. He only has six army. So he's not going to be able to do too much there. And we have 70 army for Dark. What Dark should be doing now in Fi, I think, is to add a ram as well. To really ensure that the castle foundation is going, going to go down as well. Now we will see the last effort for, for Dugao to try to get the castle up. First, trying to get the monks. He's doing a good job in doing that. But, oh boy, these villagers are going to die so heavily. And Dugao is forced to tap out of this one. Oh, that was that was a, a slaughter. That was a slaughter. Dugao was not able to get the castle up in time. It was the right idea, but Dark with the monk had the had the extra vision. And you know that's that's the thing because if that castle goes up, it's a completely different game. Completely different, right? But if the castle doesn't go up and you lose so many villages in the process, well, Dark is going to clinch the victory there. 
And we have Dark leading against Ugao 2-1. Let's see if he's going to be able to close it out in the next two games because he is on match. We have game number four. There's no stream delay, no. Game number four between Dark and Tugao. Dark here playing in the blue trunks as Incas. And on the right hand side, we have Tugao playing in red trunks as Magyars. The map which both of them are playing on is called Gorge. In the past, I always said George, but chat, fortunately for me, has corrected me there. So they were playing on Gorge. And let's take a look at how Gorge is designed. So Gorge, Gorge is a map which I would consider more as a passive map or more of a close map. Because usually it is very easy to wall yourself. And that way, you know, it kind of invites to the macro orientated play into the Imperial Age play. Not really easy to make aggression ping off here then and uh that that is i would say the the biggest characteristic of this map you don't have stone on your main main ground or main platform the stone accessible on this map is only in this valley here and this valley is you know in downhill so it's very hard to uh, to gather stone, because your opponent will obviously try everything he can to uh, deny access to that stone. Some person is on a higher elevation. Uh, both are on the same elevation, but if you're going down, you're not on the same elevation here. Good! So, we have Dogao playing as Magyars. Magyars is one of the... Like, for me personally, one of the these Sifs, right? Because they are lacking economy upgrades, yes. That's where they are not the best. However, their Imperial Age could be, especially on open maps, one of the very best. Because they have Magyar Hustler that can train, um, can be trained for free in gold cost if you get that unique upgrade. So you only, the only thing you need is castles to produce them. And then they have the best Cav Archers in the game in my point of view because they have Curveball which allows the cavalry archers to get extra range and extra attack. And that's obviously a lovely one. Okay, that eagle has not taken any damage from the TC, so that's obviously good for Dark. Dugao, he was pushing one deer in. That will boost your economy quite a bit. And Dark on the other side with Incas, he is going for a pre mill rush. And that is also a very popular opening, which has kind of been popularized popularized by, or if uh, in the King of the Desert 4 tournament. In the past, people went for uh, three militia after the mill has been placed, right? So you go for mill at pop 14, and then you add the barrack at pop 18, roughly uh, along those lines. Then you add three militia, try to wall yourself behind. And then go for fast castle. That's the, the build which has been used a lot. Especially very effective on maps which are easy to wall. That way you can buy yourself time with the rush. Your opponent has to has to react to that. And yeah, that gives you time to wall. And then you can pull off the fast castle. Good. From Dugao we see exactly the same. He's going for the primal rush as well. And he's taking a lot of... Or dealing a lot of damage to that eagle. That was already a great, great start for Dark. He was not paying attention. And Togao, in the meanwhile, he is using the time. He is gathering, get, getting himself to wall up his map. And for my taste, personally, I think Togao is investing too much into walling right now. I think that villager is completely fine. That one, not too much. Like, you have to think about it. Yeah, scratch that thought. <laughs> It's good that he's walling. I was like, what is the likelihood of his opponent going all the way here? But oh boy, uh, you guys are just watching a professional caster, okay? So you have to believe everything he's saying. Oh god, turns out 100%, yeah. The, the berries are kind of vulnerable here though. 
Dark doing a good job in quick walling though. So he will not be able, he will not take any, any damage there. But he's busy. Therefore, his little army here is not able to deal any damage so far. And they could have been very annoying. Nostradamus. Come on, guys. You cannot always be right. Just doesn't work like that. Dark going for loom now. So he's going to go up to... Uh, no, he will not. He's just getting the loom upgrade to be safe at home. He doesn't want to lose any villager unnecessarily. And what is that gold mining camp? I think even in a worse scenarios, Doubt would not place it like that. Yeah, that, that's not the best mining camp, I would say. Ideally, you want to have it here, like you did initially. And I honestly, like, why? Why go for that gold if you have the back gold here? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, good. Dugao, he has 26 villagers already. So he's opting to go for fast castle behind that. While Dark, he's upping with 25 villagers. And 25 villagers is very tricky because it is uh, in between. Between, It's too early to go for fast castle and it's too late to go for fuel age. Right? So I think Dugao is taking the lead here in terms of the opening. And Dark is also now defending with the two militia. They, they're going to go home and he's going to be successful in doing so because he has more HP as well. And thanks for hosting and so amazing content really uh, Janis, thank you. Nice name by the way. You're dominating the leak. Um Dark he has he's adding more farms here. He doesn't know where Dogao is right now with his army. He gets the confirmation now and he should be able to clean this one up very soon. While in the meanwhile uh, in the meantime I'm wondering what Dugao is going for. I would assume that he's going for crossbows. That is just uh, the standard way of playing this one right now. And his his map is just so beautiful. The way how Dugao is using his map is just very lovely. We see Dari coming up with two archer ranges himself. He's going for the wood upgrade. So he is 100% not going to opt for a uh, fast castle behind that. And uh, this could be dangerous for him because Dugao, he knows where his gold is. It is very exposed. And yeah, it's easy to harass that gold mine with, uh, with crossbows. And that is something yeah, we see the archer range coming up as well. Oh, Dugao is not going for a fast castle. He is in fuel age. He is sticking in fuel age. Huh. Okay, then uh, scratch that thought. I was sure that uh, he was pulling off a castle age play after this one. So the guy going for fuel age after upping with 27 villagers. That is uh, very late as well. So how is the scouting looking like for both players? Uh, Dark doesn't have vision of this one here. So he is, I think, assuming that Dugao is on that gold. And Dugao uh, on the other side, he should be having a good indication of how Dark's map looks like. Yeah, he has all the information he needs. And that's beautiful for him. Dark, he's going, go back, uh, going to go back now because he has already... He feels that Dugao is going to go for the skirms here. And he wants to uh, get out of here as soon as possible. And that is exactly the right decision by him. He's fully, fully focusing on archer range play here. And if we think a bit further. So how is the ideal composition looking like for Dark in Imperial Age against a most likely to happen Calf Archer and Mega Husser play? Could also be Hussers. Hussers are only 68 in terms of the food cost compared to the 80, which they are usually. However, I don't like what Dugao did there. He was showing the skirms. That obviously will tell Dark, hey, he's going for skirms. Things are making sense here from what I have scouted because he doesn't know that there is gold in here. He knows that Dugao is not on gold yet. So in Dark's position, it is very easy to think like, okay, 
He is not on gold. He doesn't have anything in the back here. But yeah, I'm not sure if that is really his thought process here. Good. What does the uh, Incas have? So obviously when you're playing against Gav Archers, you need to go for the Eagles in Imperial Age and they get extra Pierce Armor. I think they get 4 plus 6 in the final stage against the 7 plus 5 uh, from the CA. So that should be very good for the Eagles. So with the Eagles, I think what you want to do is a complete Halberdier plus... Eagle composition as the Inca player. Don't commit too much on the uh, on the archers in in, in Prelage. He could go full knights though. Yeah, but you have the halberdiers there, right? And Dugao, he's going for knights. No, he's going for stable just to uh, to go bloodlines. Dugao uh, going up to castle age a bit faster than dark. Dark adding the fletching now as well. And that's also something I like about what dark did here. He's um, doing fletching after he has clicked up to Castle Age. That obviously will give him a little boost there in terms of the timing. Uh, Incas have fully upgraded Arbalest, yes. They even have Thumbring as well. So they're not too shabby. And I like what Dark did there. Because Dark is completely ignoring this aggression here with his main army. And he's now trying to do s make something happen. And we see Cav Archer play now from Dugao. And you know, whenever you are going Cav Archers, instead of going crossbows at the beginning, you're always going to be fragile at the beginning of Castle Age. Once you have good upgrades on your uh, Cav Archers, and you also have the numbers. Right now, Dugao cannot fight against that. And the problem is for Dark, he doesn't really know what Dugao is going for. In theory, in these archer ranges, there could be a lot of uh, skirms as well. So, Dark, he wants to be rather safe than sorry, which is the right move. And he retreats with his crossbows there. Monastery coming up for Dark. So, he wants to add... He wants to add uh, a relics into his repertoire as well. And these, these cav archers, that's exactly what I was talking about. Dark... He needs, he definitely needs to get himself uh, TC here. That's so important. We see Dugao also adding a second TC. And he needs a few more farms in order to also be sustaining the third TC as well. Usually you always see at least three TCs in those kind of plays, guys. It's just a meta. And it feels like it's the right way to do it. And the Cav Archers is just so super annoying now. They're so annoying due to the fact that they have uh, mobility. And they are going to be able to uh, just be harassing all the time. And the crossbows, they're not able to catch those, right? They have uh, one point... Where is it? Why, uh, like... Oh, 1.4 versus 0 0.96. And now this is a nice catch for the Gao. Dark has to abandon this TC here. And Dugao, he will be able to kill three villagers in the process. Oh, this is a, this is a rough one. Nice pick off by Dugao. Being very active. And that is exactly the problem for, for Dark. He's just being pulled apart here. This is a new, nice move. Just keeping... He's keeping crossbows here for defense. Uh, to prevent Dugao, and Dugao for the, the harassment. And he's adding a TC here. Yeah, that TC should be fine. That definitely should be fine to secure that area. Now what Dugao could be doing, and that's something which I would be doing, is build a siege workshop here to put on the aggression here. He doesn't need the wood line at all. He's huge one in his base. And that is the huge, huge factor for uh, Cav Archers. Usually when you're crossbows, when you're playing crossbows, you want to be the one who is dictating the pace of the game. Because, oh boy, this is looking very grim for Dark. He's losing a bit of villagers here as well. Not too many. The CA don't have ballistics yet. And the TC is going to go up. But, oh boy, 44 villagers against the 56. He has second wood upgrade, while Dugar does not. But, he also goes for wheelbarrow. 
PC has gotten up here. He's going for third archer range. He has 10 on food though. So he will not be able to sustain the villager production. While Dugao, he has 21 on food. So he will be able to get a lot of villagers out of his TCs here. And the CA, they are a fine upgrade as well. They are obviously missing ballistics and thumb ring. But they have Botkin, they have Bloodlines. And University coming in now as well for Dugao. So he wants to go for ballistics as well. And Dugao is just in a, such a good of a position here. The Monastery, yeah. He is able to get one Relic. But I don't think overall it has paid itself off too much here. Nice reaction by Dark. But Dugao, he has not taken too much damage here. Summoning now coming in for Dark. Instead of Ballistic. Not a big fan of that. You get Monks to... Heal CA or is that too expensive and slow? No, you don't do that. You do. You get monks to uh, get relics, but not to uh, to heal up. I I personally don't think it's really too worth it. When is stammering justified before ballistics? I guess in big big battles where. Most of the time the dodging is not going to occur, but most of the time ballistic should be better. And thumb ring is also a bit cheaper, right? Uh, ballistic, uh, thumb ring is a bit cheaper. No. Good. Nice uh, micro here by Dark against the Mangonel. But now obviously Dark is aware of the Mangonel or of the Siege, work uh, siege Workshop by Dugao. And therefore he wants to add one himself just to be able to counter that because with CA it's much easier to snipe a mangonel compared to the crossbows because the crossbows have seven seven damage output and the uh, cav archers have eight and that is that makes such a huge difference also if you have for example like crossbows with bohemians who have chemistry upgraded in castle age they are shredding mangonels so that one extra damage output is uh, really helping a lot we have a monk going to go down most likely. Dugao will see that one. He's patrolling in there. And yeah, that one is dead. University is going to be the knight. No, Dark is still there. He saw that the relic was or the monk was sniped. And yeah, these two villagers could have easily been prevented. He's trying to micro, but obviously, for me personally, this is the wrong moment to focus on. Like, you want to focus on other things in that point. And now, look, like, just just here real quick. If you have ballistics, you have the potential to do something. At least get one or two kills. With thumb ring, you're strong, yes. Do you get kills? No. You don't get any kills there. Um, so, yeah. The economy is looking amazing for the Gao. He has 90 villagers right now. He's going for thumb ring now as well. And for Dugao, Thumb Ring is a bit more important than it is for the crossbow player. Just because the accuracy is going to improve vastly for Dugao here, for the CA. Crossbows themselves have a bit of a better accuracy than CA without Thumb Ring. So getting in Thumb Ring is a huge factor. And Thumb Ring will give you 100% accuracy if, you're, if the unit you're targeting is not moving. Dark going to Imprilage though. And, you know, Dugao, he's not too far away from that as well. And Dark, he cannot fight against that. These two Mangonels are just too much to handle. And he needs to be really, really cautious here. One Mangonel hit could end his game right now. Yeah. So he's uh, ahead in terms of the imp timing. But what is it going to be? One and a half minutes? Still, Dugao has such a huge advantage in terms of the villagers. 25 villagers more. How are the economy upgrades looking like? Dead even right now on term in terms of the wood and uh, gold, uh, wood farming and the TC upgrades. And that's the thing. Dark is fully setting himself up for Arbalest play, but the Arb Arbalest play is going be is going to be on a timer. Definitely going to be on the timer. And now Dark has been pushed away from this gold here. He can't fight this army. And this that's a fight he definitely has to take. 
And man, this is so horrible for Dark. He's one minute away from... Uh, from Imperial Age. And these crossbows are all going to go down. He will be able to kill a lot of CA in the process, yes. But oh, wow, that was a huge hit. Uh, huge hit for Dugao. <laughs> and I think Dark will call, call the GG in a moment. <laughs> huge shit, yeah. I was hoping, I was hoping you guys, I was hoping you guys would not uh, pay attention. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> And now the three archer ranges, which are going to come up, uh, are uh, stopped as well from Dugao. Dark has reached Imperial Age, going for Bracer. But how much army does he have? Five? He has five army? Is he going to be able to do any anything with these five army? I don't think so. It's not looking good at all. For him and doubt, uh, doubt. Dugao, one in ten villagers. He has 22 army. Gold shaft mining upgrade coming in. Heavy plow coming in. He's adding a, so a stone as well. More arch range is coming in as well into the fray. It's just like everything is working so smoothly for Dogao. And I don't see how he can throw this game here. It's going to be a, such a huge task for Dark to climb back into this game. And yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Chemistry coming in as well. He sees his uh, opponent is not in the privilege yet. He obviously wants to fight. He wants to try everything he can to... Uh, um, you know, manage getting the remaining win he needs to advance to the winner's match. But Dugao, he's too good of a player to allow that. Now, Parthen Tactics coming in as well for Dugao. And that will give him two more Pierce armor on his CA. Currently has Z uh, two. And with that, he will have four then. Which uh, is going to be a huge deal as well. We have also padded archer army armor coming in for Dark. He's a bit late on that one. Woo! This is this is looking very bad for for Dark here. We have also 17 army against 26, and we have heavy cav archers coming in as well for for Dugao. And I mean, what what potential does Dark have? Dugao, he is about to build a castle as well, and once he has the castle, he has access. To get into uh, the recurve ball. And here we have the four pierce armor. And we have a bit of a raiding action going on as well. Population wise, they are far apart as well. We have 145 population against the 114. And that castle is going to go up. So Dark is fully aware that there is going to be a castle in the game as well. And Dark, he realizes the situation he is in. And is then, therefore, forced... Tap out, we have a fight up set between Dark and Dugao, 2-2 two, two guys. And that means we have another decider game. I've been blessed, blessed with my uh, casting career so far with uh, decider games because so far there have been a lot. Okay, good guys. We will be jumping now into game number 5 and this one is going to be capture, uh, capture age. Regicide Fortress, and that is the remaining home map for Dark. And let's see what he's going to be capable of doing here. So, we have Dugao here playing in the red trunks as a Vietnamese. Wow. Vietnamese on Regicide Fortress. That's going to be hard to beat. Let's say it like that. And on the other side, we have Dark playing in the blue trunks as Sicilians. And guys, for all those people, and I'm not, I'm, I'm sure we are only talking uh, most likely about a very small portion of the viewers. But for those people who don't know, I will just quickly explain this map. So the map functions in a way which is completely different compared to the other maps we have in this tournament. Because the game mod is regicide, regicide. And what regicide means is that instead of starting with 200 food, 200 uh, food, 100 stone, and no, 200 stone and 100 gold, uh, you are starting here with 500 food, 500 um, wood, 150 stone, and zero on gold. Whew, that was a tough one. And you're starting with, guys. 
tell me if I'm mistaken with uh, 12 villagers, right? And you start with a scout and a king as well. And you start with uh, a castle as well. So, the king is used to uh, scouting. It has great uh, line of sight. So that way you're able to uh, get the scouting in very efficiently, very fast. In case you want to do so, obviously. Dark doesn't want to do so. Which surprises me. Yeah, that, that's something you don't do. You do that if you're close to fuel age because you don't want your king to be sniped. But of course, you know, on on Regicide Fortress, if you are losing the king, you lose the game. That is a win condition. Even if you're leading in the game and your opponent has no chance in theory anymore to come back in a normal way, you will still lose the game if you lose the king. So having the king secured is one of the biggest importance in, in this one. So yeah, Dark his Sicilians. Sicilians understand, understand why he would want to have Sicilians here because Sicilians have a great boom due to the fact that there are two points to, to add here. First of all, they're building uh, extra TCs 15 or 100% faster, right? So the TCs go up very much faster. Therefore, you're able to go uh, build villages faster. Second point is that with the farming upgrades, you boost your farms much more in a way that the farm itself has much more food before it depletes. And that helps obviously also your boom because you then have way more wood uh, exposed to you which you can invest into uh, different aspects of the game. Uh, guys, sorry again, I have to, I forgot to run the ad. I have to run the ad real quick. Sorry again about that one, guys. 90 seconds, sorry. Um, okay, good. So we see both players going up to Feudal Age. Not a big surprise here. We have Dark having a 22 build up. No, 24, 22 villagers. And Dugao, he's going up with 20 villagers. So that one is very, very narrow. And usually when you're having, when you're having uh, 20 villagers in Dark Age to go up to Fuel Age, usually that means that you will not be able to have the resources to build three TCs right away. So let's see what Dugao is going to be able to pull off here. He has 10 seconds of idle time. If you are very, very precise about that, that's 40% of a villager, right? In this case, my point of view, it makes sense to build one villager more and be 15 seconds later to cast Lage. I think that's better. But yeah, this is just, you know, very picky by me. But oh, oh like, you know, on the, on the high level, as those kind of small things matter. We also see everyone is doing that most of the time at least that they're using five villagers to gather the stone without the stone mining upgrade because you only need 50 stone to gather to get yourself the second TC as well, right? Because you're starting with 150 stone. We have a, star a scout war fighting here. Dugao should be having the lead here. 24 uh, HP against the 17. And yeah, indeed, he's able to push that one back. And I'm just wondering, guys, if Darik, his idea is to... Okay, before I go into the, the, strat the strategical, strategical decisions, I first want to talk about Vietnamese real quick as well, because I have not done that. Vietnamese, they have the bonus that they don't have to invest any wood into their economical upgrades. And that is a huge help as well. Saves you wood means you're able to invest wood into uh, into other areas. You see, being placed here, I'm a bit... I'm not the biggest fan of that, because that means that one could be pushed by mangonels, and let's just assume you're against... you're against MBL. Will MBL use this... use this hill here to push with mangonels? 100% he will. Yeah, Sicilians, they start with with uh, 250 stone. That is a speciality by them. 
30c coming up for Dugao, so I was a bit wrong with my assumption. Was able to pull it off. And now, guys, it's going to be very interesting. Who is going to be able to pull ahead in terms of the, the boom here? We're starting off both, uh, all three, uh, all two players are starting with the 25 villagers. Dugao has the three TCs up already. Dark, he only has the two TCs up yet. The third one is about to come up now. And economy upgrades, heavy plow in for Bo, uh, for Dugao and Bosa. While we have Dark not having heavy plow yet. Why doesn't he have heavy plow yet? That is super surprising to me. You definitely want to get heavy plow. Oh, he's going for monastery. Oh, okay, okay, okay. He wants to go for monastery. He wants to aim for the relics, guys, before he is getting the heavy plow, I, I would assume. And that is a risky thing to do because look at that. He has, okay, he has heavy plow now. But that means he has now 20 villagers at uh, six villagers on foot. He has three TCs and he has only five farms. You need roughly 16. You need roughly 16 villagers on food to sustain 3TC production. So we will play, pay a close attention to the TC all time here. And that one is going to be massive. Massive. That one will go up to 3 or 4 minutes even. He kind of has to use the market. But he doesn't have a market. Oh, he went for scouts! Yeah, Dark is there doing a big mistake here. He's doing too much at once. He's going for three TCs. He's going for light uh, scouts. Uh, he goes for uh, monks as well. Like, he will get himself the relic, yes, but he will fall behind heavily in terms of the villager department. Okay. Dugao, so far, he he uh, gathered himself a bit of idle time as well in the TC. Yeah, both players not having the smoothiest transition into the boom, but also I don't want to be too critical because they have added monasteries as well, right? And if you're adding monastery, that if you're adding the monastery, that means that you will be lacking the wood to go for the farms early castle age to avoid having a huge LTC time. But now Dark he has 20 on food, and now the three minute. 11 seconds we see here are going to be remaining at that rate, I would say. 49 villages for Dugao, 47 for Dark. He could have uh, uh, prevented that by going for a trade on the on the market. And we have the 4th DC coming in here for Dark as well. So Dark should be able to catch up in the villager numbers pretty soon as well. Now the monk is going to be saved, I think. No, it's going to go down. But, and Dugao was able to kill, uh, Dugao was able to kill that monk. And now that monk is going to be attacked as well. And lucky conversion, lucky conversion. Why did Dark go back here, uh, Dugao go back here? That doesn't make too much sense. I mean, they were already in the, in the range anyway. Could have used that. Ah! Gotten the conversion. Got it. One thing which I always like to look at if players play Registered Fortress is what is the wheelbar timing. Both players go for the wheelbar at exactly the same time. And if you look at that, I personally think that's a very great timing to have right now. They have 63 villagers, a lot on farms. And usually you are not really able to get the wheelbar a bit faster. You can only do so if you uh, dele delay your TC there. So, both players are going for the relics. We have two relics for uh, Dark already. We have the third one being very close to Dark as well. And this one is going to be secured by Dugao as well. So we will uh, transition this into a uh, very imp-focused combination uh, or game rather, I should say. And how is that one going to look like? So Sicilians, they want to go for... Sorry for, for me touching my nose all the time, but it's not 100% today, unfortunately. 
Um, yeah, Sicilians, they want to go for cavalry. I would assume with the... How, how is the unique tech called? But I, I'm not sure how it's called, but it should be... Giving the... The cavalry seven... No, eight pierce armor. And six melee, uh, melee army, uh, armor, right? Hauberg, yeah. Something like that. And... For Vietnamese, you want to go for halberdiers and retin archers. And that should be a good move. In general, you want to avoid going for trash units against the Sicilians because they have a very nice characteristic of the way how they're. Um, delete the stone wall! Delete the stone wall! You didn't delete the stone wall! Delete the stone wall and garrison into the uh, tower, right? Elite Battle Elephants. Uh, the problem with Elite Battle Elephants is that they are very... Uh, very immobile. And... They are also in theory getting countered by, by Halberdiers. And Sicilians have Halberdiers. Yeah, anyway. So, Sicilians have that very nice characteristic. That their... Uh, the trash units, or any unit... Is only doing... 50% of the extra bonus damage. Which it usually does. Right. So, for example... Uh, skirms are not doing as much damage to archers as they are supposed to. So that's why if you're facing up against Sicilians, you want to have gold units against them. And you don't really want to have uh, trash units. Thanks for the info, such a good cast. Tato, thanks man. I appreciate when there are players or viewers appreciating my knowledge. What about Sicilians, Tato man? Okay, we have uh, Imperial Age coming in for both players. Dugao is a bit faster there, one minute roughly. And he's having a great position on this on this map. This castle is beautiful. Getting another castle up here is going to be a great one as well. Dugao has decided... Sicilians, man. Uh, Dugao has decided to go for that hill here. Because he then will be able to take control of that zone as well. And now obviously Dark sees that. And he's not going to be too pleased about that one. He's doing a nice castle here. That is exactly the right move. And he needs to stonewall here. Because that one is asking or inviting for aggression. And that's the thing. Dugao, he's not committing to the, to the red archers. He knows exactly. Hey, still ends. What do they do usually against ranged units? They're going for the cavalry with the... No, they're going for first crusade. Dark. He knows things. He knows things, guys. He was expecting the Halberdier play. He didn't see it, but he was expecting it. And therefore, the first crusade is going to be awesome. The first crusade will give you five surgeons per TC. Maximum five TCs. And therefore, he will be able to slaughter those Halberdiers. And that means we will have Dark... Going to be able to reclaim the position here, most likely. We see Trebuchet going to go ham onto that castle. We have a plate mail armor coming in as well for, Duga uh, for Dark. And Dark, he is in a good position here. Especially... Duga, he's not ready for that. He has bot air right now. He's going for that. So, his castle is not going to be too strong as well. And he doesn't have ballistics as well. So, in theory, Duga... He's going to have such a rough time because the first crusade is going to be a strong, strong thing which will grant Dark a lot of map control here. He's going to push this one back for sure. The guy, I'm not sure if he's going to have enough time to assemble the army he needs. He needs to get a lot of retin archers out, but guys, he doesn't have the economy to do so. He has 90 villagers so far. While Dark, he has 130 villagers, he's going for elite surgeons as well, he's going for the iron casting, and he has the huge momentum for him. Now he's also able to kill those retin archers, and man, look at the army size, 30 against 9, and let's not forget about it. Dark, he has gotten with the first crusade so many surgeons, 25 in total, I don't want to say for free, but they were spawning very fast, of course. 
And the Gao, he is forced to tap out of this game. And that means Dark has won the first set of the opening match. Meaning that he is going to advance further to the winner's match. Where he will face either Mr. Yo or Miguel. We will jump into that set in a brief moment. And Dugao, he, I think he, he will not be too happy with his performance. Usually he plays better. I don't think he brought his A game, unfortunately for him. And that means that he is going to be in the loser's match against either Yell or Mr. Yo. We will jump into that set, uh, set in a moment. So guys, these are the statistics. Military-wise, we have a huge lead for Dark, but... As I said, first crusade, that definitely helps for your defense here. Economy-wise, we have a huge lead for Dark as well. And as I said, before I started with uh, with the cast today of, of these two players, Dark is usually excelling in these macro-orientated um, maps. So no surprise there that he was able to win those. And interesting for me as well is that both players have won their home maps. So that also kind of is an indicator how important those home maps are, guys.